Hey there, how's it going? So this video will be a bit different in terms of presentation. Usually I record my progress while I work on a project so I can show the various stages it took to reach the completion. But for this project, I really don't have any of that. For whatever reason, I recorded none of the development, and the times I worked on it live on stream, I apparently didn't download either. So at this point, the VODs have been deleted and lost to the sands of time, and I swear I recorded some parts, but my folder of recordings says otherwise. To make matters even worse, I don't even know what happened to the current assets that I'm using either. I just have a few mockups of version 1 and nothing else. I'm usually really good about keeping all the stuff for a project, but in this rare instance, I basically have nothing other than the final product. So by the law of the internet, Pixar it didn't happen, we'll just assume I finally found that make a game button in the construct engine that all the trolls keep telling me about in the comments, and we'll just hit that as needed. Also, while looking for that, I found this nifty make an ad button. I wonder what it does. I want to thank Southern New Hampshire University for sponsoring this video. Do you feel like your experience is holding you back from pursuing the career you want? Southern New Hampshire University has one of the largest accredited non-profit online degree offerings in the country. They feature over 200 degree programs focused on getting you started in or advancing in a career that you'll love. One program I think you might really like is the Game Art and Development Program, an online game dev degree that zeroes in on game art creation, where you will build a portfolio of front-end designs and concepts. You'll use industry standard 3D and 2D software to create worlds, creatures, and UI, all while focusing on 3D modeling and sculpting, illustration and digital painting, rigging and character animation, as well as lighting, shading, and texturing. All of SNHU's programs are extremely flexible. There are no set class times allowing you to work when and where you want. And if you started college and never finished, SNHU will let you transfer up to 90 credits so you don't have to completely start over. Southern New Hampshire University is radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation and haven't increased in over 10 years. They also feature an active community of students. Join clubs, attend mixers, and hang out with your fellow students. You can get the whole college experience entirely online. So, if you want to kick off a new career or take your current one to the next level, click the link in the description to get more information and browse all their programs. Okay, so here's the thing. If you've ever been to one of my streams or seen other videos I've made that shows clips of them, you may have seen a parade of monkeys wandering, dancing, fighting, or just hanging around. Now, to be clear, I didn't make the program itself. It's called Stream Avatars. It's made by clones and it's available on Steam. And if you stream, it can be a lot of fun, especially if you're an artist. I'm not affiliated with Stream Avatars and this isn't an in-depth look at it or a review or anything like that. It's just the catalyst for the thing that I built, so I need to go into it real quick to give a little bit of context. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest right now, and this may be a hot take and some people may not agree, but a good chunk of game dev is really boring at times. So the avatars allow for some fun to be had by the chat while I'm working on less entertaining things. Each of the monkeys represents a follower or subscriber that's currently watching the stream. By default, everyone shows up as a standard brown monkey. But then in the stream avatars extension panel, viewers can customize their monkey by changing its color and adding gear from over 10 different categories. For example, these are all the different heads that I've made or body elements, or pets, or holding items, or faces. Like I said, I didn't make the program, but I did make all of the art that you see that's being used in the program. I'll put the actual count on screen because I can't be bothered to look it up right now, but I'm pretty sure that we're pushing around 400 different items that can be placed on top of the monkey across a bunch of different categories. I have a couple very large A sprite files with all of the animations that I've used for each of these, and it's an absolute nightmare to search through the whole thing if I want to find one specific item to either show it off or use it for something else. It's also a bit of a hassle for people new to the stream to have to go through every category, especially because you may not want to buy a particular item, just see how it looks in combination with others. Quick note, when I say buy, I mean custom currency that you earn by watching the stream, not real money. So my main problems are that I would like a way for viewers to be able to see what's available in an easier way, and I also need a more convenient way to be able to get screenshots and show off the different monkeys that I have made, because at the moment it's really hard to display them or show anyone else on things like social media. Unfortunately, there isn't a way that I know of right now to tie anything back into stream avatars, so this will be a standalone product. So sadly, you're not going to be able to decorate your monkey and then automatically push it over to the stream. But it'll let people check out what we have, and it allows me a way to show off all of the things that I've made over the last two years. So basically, I need to make a character creator. And because alliteration is fun, we're going to call it a monkey maker. So the way the customization works in stream avatars is we start with our base brown monkey. We can change the color of the monkey by replacing certain brown values with other values that I chose. Then the items, or gear as it's called, is placed on top of that monkey. So you can't edit the base monkey sprite, everything has to exist on top of it. It's just overlaid. And when you sync up the animations, it looks pretty good together. 
So I figured it wouldn't be too hard in Construct. All I would have to do is set up some color replacement and then make a couple of different sprites and align them and sync their animations. That's not too bad, right? I thought to myself hearing the faint whispers of future me cursing my name. I started by making a mock-up and had everything laid out nicely on buttons so that you could cycle through different items and see what you wanted. Hovering over an item would have a tooltip pop-up that shows you its name so you could go search for it when you go back to stream avatars. That should be great and easy, I thought. Not a problem. Spoilers, it wasn't easy, and probably not for the reason you think. When starting this project in Construct the first time, I went about it the way I normally would. I imported the animations into the sprite editor and started naming things. This very quickly became extremely tedious. So I just did a few items for each category before deciding to work on the UI instead, because I just, I couldn't do it anymore. For the different buttons, I imported the first frame of each item and then named it. That way the button would know what the corresponding item is and it would be more useful for pulling up the tooltips. But again, this was even more tedious. Now, I absolutely love Construct, but one of the things I do think is a little rough around the edges is adding animations. It's just not very convenient. Normally, it's not that big of an issue for me. I add in the characters, I add in this or that, not a huge problem. But with hundreds of these to do, I very quickly wanted to tear my eyes out. To save my sanity a little, like I did with the items, I only added a few of each of the different types and tried to hook up the buttons. And that's when I realized that the way I had this all set up, I would have to keep track of each of the different item types in each of the different subcategories. It just ended up the way I was thinking about it was completely wrong. And while doing all this, it really made me understand that there was one part that I forgot about to mention in the needs and goals for this project. Either that, or it was at this point that the whole idea of this became really important to me. This needs to be able to be updated easily, or I'm never gonna come back and add in the new items that I make. With the way that everything was going and the way I was setting things up, none of that was going to be easy as I move forward. So like I do with most of my projects, when they get too hard for my current monkey brain to deal with, I yeeted it up on the shelf and moved on to something else. Oh, this is gonna be my problem now, isn't it? Hey, I like the way you think. So there stood the monkey maker. So much potential, but just way too much boring, inefficient, busy work to complete. It sat on that shelf for months, gathering dust and doing nothing. Just a dream of something I really wanted, but didn't want to finish. That's when, after some time, I found this little hidden button in the construct menu called Make a Game. I pressed it and voila! Instantly it- <laughs> Instantly! This took me days to figure out. <clears throat> instantly, everything was completely redone and not in a dumb, repetitive way. Which means we have a functioning monkey maker. Some sacrifices were made and honestly, it's because of my convenience of updating and not wanting to have to go through and tediously name everything. The idea of having names on everything and having buttons with images on them, it was just too much. It's gone. Now it's just replaced with a very easy to understand next and previous button. It adds to the mystery and makes you want to click through to see everything. At least that's what I'm telling myself and you because the other buttons I wanted to make would take ages to set up an update. I also threw in a random button if you feel bold and just want to let fate decide, as well as a reset button on the other side that clears the category for balance. Because of the tedium of having to cut out and add in specific animations like I was doing before, I thought I would only be able to have the idle animation for demonstration here. But thanks to the new way I set this up, I can now have all the main animation sets that I use in stream avatars. Below the animation buttons, you can also change the backgrounds, which are all created by Ansamuz, who's a super talented artist and I've been a patron of theirs for a while. Finally, on the left, there's a few more buttons, one that will pick random items from random categories to apply to make a whole monkey, a way to reset everything, credits for myself and Ansamuz, as well as my amazing patrons, and a download button so once you're done, you can save your masterpiece. This is the first time I'm ever doing anything with saved screenshots, so it's not great. I have to keep everything locked into a fixed size, and if you do change the scale of the window, it grabs the wrong area. I wish it wasn't quite this way, but it's not something that I cared that much about, so I left the project as is. As long as it runs at the native size, everything works fine. So now you can make and download your own custom monkey and use it for things like profile pics, like Pontypants has been using for a while on Twitter. Shout out to Pontypants. You're free to use the download for personal use, but obviously you don't own the rights to it and you can't sell it or anything like that. Basically, I give no permissions for making them into NFTs or anything like that. Just don't. And that's all the features of the product, but how does it hit that extra category that I cared about? How is updating everything, you may ask? It's great, actually, and here's why. Instead of using the sprite animation features that are native in Construct, I instead pretty much wrote my own. Instead of uploading individual frames, I'm now just uploading the entire sprite sheet, and I have that image move in sequence behind the UI background. I just made a variable and set it as the frame rate, so that many times a second, the images move forward by the sprite size. When I get to the last frame in the sequence, it loops back to the first, and hey, we've got animation now. 
To switch between the different animations, I just have to change the Y axis and move it up and down. It's pretty much that simple. Compared to what I was doing before, this is amazing. The old way I was needing to make a new animation, name it, import the frames, break it into the separate animations if I wanted to do that, and then remove the frames that were not needed. And if you multiply that by a few hundred times, no thank you. Now I just have to upload the whole sprite sheet as a single image. Each category is a single sprite where each frame is a different item. When the project loads, I stack them all on top of each other and move them in unison. Pressing the next and previous button just adds or subtracts from the current frame number, with the first frame being empty so you can have a clear category. Yes, we do lose having labels for each of the different items, but the ease and flexibility makes that a sacrifice that I'm absolutely willing to live with. It's really amazing that sometimes it just takes that one thought to make the whole project work. Realizing that because I wanted to have the animations stay in a single spot, it wasn't going to be that hard to make my own animator. That's what made all the difference. I'm not really sure how useful this will be for other projects yet, but for here, it works absolutely great. So if you'd like to make your own monkey like all of these lovely people, there's a link in the description to check it out. This project was a lot of fun and one I actually finished quite a while ago, but I'm just now getting around to making a video about it. If you'd like to stay more up to date on the things I'm working on, stop by the live stream over at twitch.tv slash vimlark. I recently went back to my job after two years, so my schedule is now pretty drastically changed. I'm now streaming Saturdays and Sundays from noon to five Pacific Standard Time. Saturdays we play community games and give feedback and critiques, and Sundays are either dev or art days. If you got the time, stop by, I'd love to chat with you. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, and if you feel so inclined, you could subscribe and hit the bell, why not? Thank you all for watching, and I would like to give an extra special shout out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters, especially my video producer tier and up patrons like Baron Earth, Edmark Games, Nightfall, Jotson, Motsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Pixelator Gadzi, Retro MMO, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Some Dude, Straight Up Gruntled, and Warren Steven Rose. Thank you all so much for the continued support. You're all awesome people, and I truly, truly appreciate it. Thanks again to the sponsor of this video, Southern New Hampshire University. If you're looking to advance in a field you love, click the link in the description below. And a final thank you for watching, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.